everyone, uh, Christian here from CK Wraps. Um, so I'm going to show you how to wrap the bonnet or hood on this uh, Jeep in purple satin chrome. Uh, we've taken the material, cut it to a larger size than what the hood is, making sure that we have a little bit of room to pull on on, on every end. Um, also, we've prepped the surface with isopropyl alcohol, we've washed the vehicle itself, we've compressed everything off, and we've also prepped it with tack reducer. Um, the vivid tack reducer is very important, especially with this being a horizontal surface. Um, horizontal surfaces means that this film is going to want to grab on a little bit more than if it's draping down a door or a fender, uh, or even a bumper for that matter. So the fact that this lays flat, um, and the temperature is pretty warm in here today, uh, it's going to want to tack almost right away. We want to make sure that it's not tacking too much right away. Um, because when we go to reposition it, it's going to make it very difficult. Also, it could leave marks in the film. Uh, so what we're going to do is we obviously have some excess film. So we're going to trim off the excess, which is in the front end here. Making sure that you're leaving enough to grab onto you um, in the front end also, so we're not going to trim too close to the uh, to the end of the hood. And this will be a great piece that we can use later on for something else. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take this film and roll it up. So with the satin chromes, uh, they are one of the more difficult uh, materials to install. They're actually um, changing the entire um, finish and the workability of this film coming up actually in just like about a week or two. Um, the film is already out. I'll be the first to have a few, um, a, a few bits of it or some samples of it to play around with. And I'm going to show you some uh, comparison videos between this stuff and the new stuff uh, as far as like finish goes. Um, quality and you know ease of install pretty much because this is the, the second hardest material that I've ever installed uh, next to the holographic chrome. Uh, so we'll take this piece, we'll tape it up and we'll put it to the side for now. I like to stick the extra pieces inside the vehicle so we'll put it in the back seat. And that way we know where all the extra bits are. So of course, I've got a few things handy. I've got a wrap glove, squeegee and buffer, and a 9mm 30 degree blade. Um, these are your most important tools as well, as well as a heat gun. We'll be needing a heat gun on this area, on this uh, hood here. It's fairly flat, but it does have quite a curve down here and a bit in the front. So we're going to need some heat in this area, mostly as opposed to anywhere else. Um, also what we've done here is we've embossed um, this pattern underneath. So we've laid this film down first on both sides of the vehicle. And I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. And we're gonna be out basically creating an outline underneath the film, which looks really, really badass. So you know, if you're looking to do something a little bit different with your car, you always think, kind of think outside the box, there's like all kinds of different possibilities of what you can do. Uh, so we'll start by removing the back of the paper. Remember, I'm, we're doing this alone, you have a hand, uh, and someone to help you, that's fantastic. Doing this alone, you're all, and even when you have someone helping, you're going to want to make sure that we're rolling the back of the paper off and we're not creasing the film. So we've got magnets handy, of course. Stop in there. I like to remove the entire backing paper um, as a whole. I know that you can take the paper, lift the vinyl up, cut the backing paper off and do half at a time. In my opinion, you risk contaminants um, getting underneath the film. So we don't want that. So we want to make sure that we're keeping the film always as close and tight to the vehicle as possible or to any panel. As soon as we go to lift this film up, it's going to want to um, draw in 
particles from around it. Now we've used a compressor to try to eliminate that, but you never know what else could be laying around that we haven't, we haven't seen or we might have missed. So let's just try to keep the vacuum paper on it, uh, roll off all in one shot. That way we eliminate the chances of anything getting underneath the wrap. We're gonna have to reposition the film, but we won't be lifting the film halfway back and then putting it back down again. So make sure you get rid of this, sure this paper, it's very slippery, especially when it's folded over on itself or, or it's got a, another sheet underneath it, it's going to be like ice. So you'll slip, you'll break your leg, break your neck, just be careful, you don't want that to happen. It's supposed to be a painless procedure, it's already uh, tedious enough in some cases, so you want to make sure that uh, you're not causing any bodily harm. All right, so I fold it up, I'll put it away. Now we need to, the next step would be glassing the bonnet, so or the hood of this vehicle. I'm just gonna make sure the video's still playing here. Yep, perfect. Um, so we're gonna glass this. There's a lot of wrinkles in it right now. Um, we wanna make sure that this is as smooth as possible before we start squeegeeing it all. So we'll take the film, give it a quick pull upwards. Just like that, pulling out, I'm pulling towards me and I'm pulling out with my left hand on an angle on diagonally and I'm pulling out with my right hand diagonally. So it's look, it looks fantastic right now actually, you pretty much lost the whole thing other than, other than this, this contour over here. Um, it looks great, so I'll just do a little bit more over here. So now, what we want to do is we want to create a bracket. The hood is very loose. Um, the hinges aren't bolted on completely. I just use them to kind of anchor. They're, they're down, but I just, we're just kind of used to anchor the, uh, the hood so it doesn't move too much. So I can see that I lifted here just a bit, just to um, allow the air to escape a little bit easier. Um, the air release works fantastic on these films. Um, if it's films, I never have any issues um, with the air uh, coming out, especially uh, their chrome finishes. I mean, I have more issues with 3M as far as air release goes than uh, than Vivid, so and everyone loves 3M, so just to say that. So we're gonna work our way from the middle to the sides. I do long sweeps. For the most part, it's very, very flat right now. So we don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of wrinkles in the way. And just reposition that a little bit more just to get these fingers out of the way right here. And eventually we're gonna start working this in triangles. Especially when it comes down to here. So now I've come, basically I've come across like this, and I have my triangle in this section right over here. This one won't need it as much because it's very uniform and very flat going all the way down. So we're just gonna pretty much finish this off over on this side. We're going to leave a bit of that right now. We're going to, what we want to do is start contouring this film at a certain point. So it's still very flat here, but we're going to want to start contouring it just before this starts to bend. Um, this will help alleviate um, uh, ruining the film as opposed to if you're stretching over a small area and leaving it to this last point here or you start you start your stretch from over here and start conforming it from this point onwards you're going to maintain the finish of the film and the integrity of it a lot better 
and, and you won't be overstretching the film. We, are, we know that because we're going to be stretching it over a larger area, and so the percentage of stretch is going to be over a larger area, and it might be the same percent um, as opposed to a smaller area. So I just want to get it balanced out, and then we're going to go for it right about now. So get our heat gun ready, of course. I chew on my squeegee, but it's a little bit easier to hold it in your mouth than it is to uh, uh, keep putting it back in your pocket, but I'll leave it on the hood of the vehicle right now. She came unplugged, and we're going to use, use a heat gun as opposed to a torch because a torch is much more likely to burn the film than a heat gun. Um, fire, heat, I mean, it's really difficult to control the actual temperature of the heat coming from a torch. So it's a little bit easier to control with a heat gun and it also is not as concentrated. It, it, it blows out a little bit more in a, in a larger area. So mostly when it comes to doing chrome, you want to use a heat gun as opposed to a torch. You can use a torch on nearly anything else. Taking the film and softening it. I'm going to start squeezing it down ever so slightly here. The edge of the hood is not very far down, so we're almost, we're actually almost there. We're going to even out everything that's over right around here. And you'll notice when I pull up, I pull up quickly. Always important when using this comb. Like I said, when they change this comb, well, they've already changed it. And when I get the new stuff, I'm going to explain to you how to use that stuff. And, and I know already this going to be much easier because it can't really get much harder than this. So I'm going to add a little bit of heat just to even out all these fingers. You'll notice I pull very evenly and I spread, try to spread everything out. Watching what the what the fingers want to do. I'm watching how they're working out right now. If they get too angular and too too narrow, we're not going to be able to squeegee them out. But if they stay a certain size and a certain shape, we're going to be able to squeegee it out. So we won't have an issue. We've got a little too much excess film right here, so I'm going to trim some off because I can't get my hands underneath it properly. Bring your dog to work day today, so I thought I've got mine here. She's just hanging out.
contouring the film a little bit more. As far as the embossing goes, we're going to go over with the, with the heat gun and the wrap glove and we're going to make sure that all the edges are very sharp um, and nice looking. Kind of like a post heat. So we're going to finish this off. This is very uniform and straight for the most part. I'm not even pulling that hard, I'm just giving it a bit of tension and just letting the ambient air temperature and the force that I'm pulling on it do the work. I'm not pulling like crazy, I'm just giving it a bit of a pull to, to get those uh, fingers out of there. Okay, so let's get the wrap glove out and we're going to go over all of this right now. I'll take you over to the other side afterwards if you want to keep on watching and then I'm going to trim everything out afterwards and you're going to see this complete. So. Gonna finish off that recessed bit right here. too much heat, just enough to make sure we're getting nice tight edges around these, uh, these shapes that we've, we've already laid down underneath the film. Always, always post to your edges before cutting. Very important. All right, let's move my uh some camera set up over to the other side so you can see what's going on over there. Just trying to get it straightened up for you guys. All right. All right, cool. I think we're good. All right. Same thing as the other side. We'll work our way from the middle again because this is where we created our bracket.
just help alleviate some of the uh, air. I've got some pretty large air pockets here. I'm not sure if they show up on, on the camera or not, but they're just easier if you lift the film up. And it more or less ensures that we're not going to get um, any heavy or, or sharp wrinkles or fingers in the film. One of the reasons why I really enjoy Vivid's films um, is that there's no adhesive buildup. So when you go to reposition 3M, Avery, Orcal, Hexis, whatever, there's like repositioning lines. So what happens is when you go to pull that vinyl up, it leaves a thin glue line. It's, it's, it's buildup of glue. Um, I call them thermal lines, whatever you want to call them. It's kind of like has to do with heat and glue. And it just, once you pull it back, it, it it builds this little lineup, and then you go to, you go to smooth it back out, and then you have this this lineup that's permanent. You can't even there's no self healing because it's the actual glue that's underneath the film. While with Vivid, we don't get that ever. Like on the matte black finishes, gloss black, satin chrome, gloss chrome, I never have never ever seen it, um, and it's amazing because the how smooth the surface is is not even comparable. Um, I mean, if you can if you can install Vivid, sorry, uh, 3M or Avery or anything else without repositioning it, then you won't get those lines. But for the most part, you're going to have to reposition at some point, um, if you're, especially if you're doing this alone. So just uh, a little FYI there. You might notice that I use a lot of Vivid. So why do I use a lot of Vivid? This is, this is a badass color. This is unique as fuck. This is satin purple chrome. I've never even seen this before. So I can offer something a little bit more unique when it comes to when it comes to finishes. And they just came out with like a whole new line of films and I'm so stoked for it. So it all comes out this week. Um, and I'll be getting some samples this week, so some stuff to play around with. I'm getting rose gold chrome that's coming out. That came out already actually so that's going to be on its way. It should be here by, by the end of the week. Um, now it's the beginning of the week. So, anyways, yeah, stay tuned for all that cool stuff because we got some really wicked stuff coming up. All right, same, the same idea. I'm going to start bending this film, contouring it around before we get to the edge. Keeping my heat bend moving the whole time. I'm trying to spread out the stretch. That way, there's no damage in the film. Now you can see how I'm going to pull it right now. All right. So we're actually really good. These, these fingers run on an angle, so it's fine because I can pull this way. And it'll actually be easier to, to squeegee out. I'm not sure if they showed up on the on camera or not, but they were there. Now they're not. Go a little bit more here.
just going to iron out this edge right now, that way nothing wants to pull back, just in case it wants to pull back. We're just going to post heat it and give it some pressure with our finger. Finish off the rest of this right here, this won't be that difficult at all. So I've got tension right here. I'm going to take my lathe and put a relief cut so that way that kind of just wants to fold down now. It's only, it's mostly due to the fact that the hood isn't really sitting where it's supposed to be. So this other panel's a little higher and that panel's a little lower. So it's kind of throwing it off a little bit. It's totally fine. It's not even a problem. Again, I have tension just because the hood isn't sitting where it's supposed to be. Totally fine. Just put a relief cut. Cool. Had too much tension here. So I want to put a relief cut around the hinge. I'm going to go over all of these, uh, all these shapes again. Make sure the embossing looks crisp. Post heat everything as far as all the edges go. That's good. Off. 
working around the news. All right, so let's do a walk around so we can see what we're looking like right now. So we've got our embossing. Looks pretty awesome. I'm going to fix all this up once I reposition the hood. This is right near the gap anyways. That's why it's a little bit wrinkled right now, but we'll fix all that up once I trim it all up all the way. I'll have to work around the hinges a little bit more to tuck everything away. You can see all this. And this is vivid satin purple chrome. Like I said, the finish is going to change, so this it may be the only vehicle in the world with this color. Sorry if the camera's moving a lot. But uh, yeah, so just want to show you guys what was up and how to drop the hood on this thing. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to have some more cool videos up. I know I've done a bunch of hood wraps, but you know, hoods are different on every vehicle. So uh, for the most part, uh, there's going to be different things that you're going to have to do. Um, some are going to be easier and some are going to be a little bit more difficult. So anyways, thanks for watching. Um, once we get around to the rose gold chrome wrap at the end of the week, we'll po definitely post that one up uh, for everyone to see because it's going to be pretty unique. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't followed me yet, please click the follow button and I'll, and I'll post more up for you guys to learn. Anyways, take care. Thank you.